Hello and welcome to my channel. Now you join me here at Riv Rock Edge. Riv Rock Edge, it's just below Ilkley Moor. And uh, I'm glad you've been following the uh, Stanza Stones. I'm glad you've been following the Stanza Stones vlogs that I've been doing. Hope you've been enjoying them. And today I'm hoping to uh, finish them off. So we're going to do, hopefully, three Stanza Stones in one day and maybe get a trig point as well and some other glorious scenery hopefully so we will be going up onto Ilkley Moor and I hope you're going to join me So I've got quite a hike ahead of me. I think it's going to be, hopefully, if I find the Stanza Stones without any messing around, just straight to them, it should be about an eight mile hike this. So it's pretty good getting me back up to fitness now that I'm allowed a little bit more freedom. We can, we can get out for as long as we want now. So it's going to be quite a good hike. Now, why do they do this? Why do the farmers or whoever catches the moles, why do they string them up on the barbed wire fence like that? I see that a lot. Why do they do that? Has anyone got the answer to that? Is it some kind of warning for uh, moles that might be passing by? Some kind of warning not to cross this field. This is what happens to you. The moles aren't even gonna see it because they're blind. So it's a bit of an overcast day today. It's about uh, 11, 12 degrees up here. Uh, so it's a pretty decent day for walking for a good hike. Now on my notes for this walk, it does say that I go through into a carnivorous, not carnivorous, coniferous, <laughs> conifers, uh, a coniferous forest. Uh, and it's supposed to be a lovely walk through this forest, but uh, there is the gate and there's what was the forest and it looks pretty sad to me. It's all being cultivated. Uh, there must be a reason that they cultivate these, uh, these type of forests, but uh, yeah, it's a shame because I was looking forward to that little trip through the forest. So let's get on with it through this gate and it's not very far after here for the dewstone. Yes, we have got off to a flyer, found it already. It hasn't taken long at all. Just a quick trip across this cultivated forest. So yeah, bit of a boring start, bit of a depressing start with this forest being knocked down, but I have found the dewstone and I will put uh, the dewstone poem in the description below if you'd like to read it. So uh, we are moving on already to the next one and the next one is called the Puddle Stones and they are way up on Ilkley Moor. So we are going up onto Ilkley Moor. It's gonna be quite a hike to this next one. And I've got a rough map that I made for myself and hopefully I can follow that and uh, not get too lost. Now, it looks like, it looks like I am actually going into what's left of the forest. Looks like there is quite a bit of it actually. So I am going into the forest. It does look a little bit dark though. So the dewstone that we've just seen there, and I'm glad that I found it so quickly because we've got quite a way to go. The dew stone was created from one piece of stone that was split right down the middle. And you can see that it made a mirror image. So then they carved, and then they carved the, uh, the poem into it. And obviously they had to transport that to its location. Okay, so on with the hike. Uh, we're going into this forest here and it looks pretty spooky and dark, but I'm glad that you are with me and hope you're gonna stay with me. Otherwise I'd be going in there all by myself. Well, so far so good. <laughs> I'm still in the forest, haven't bottled it. Don't know how long it goes on for. It looks like quite an expanse of forest, so could be in here for some time. It is actually beautiful. It's actually a beautiful place, but uh, yeah, pretty spooky as well. So yeah, just glad that I'm not on my own. Sort of 
Look at that. Let me show you this here. I don't know whether you can see that. Yeah, did you see that? Because I'm sure these forests, conifer forests, I'm sure they are man-made. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm sure they're man-made. So obviously they're all planted in rows. So sometimes when you look through, you can see clear line of sight, a big corridor of trees with a, a gap right down, down the middle. It looks really strange and sort of eerie to be able to see that far in. Uh, you sort of like want to just stand and watch. I'm expecting to see some wildlife, but haven't seen anything yet. But uh, I can hear plenty of movement in there. <laughs> <laughs> or is it all in the head? <laughs> so we're just coming up to about two miles into this eight mile walk if we find everything successfully. And uh, the day has completely changed. A bit of a misty, uh, gloomy start to the day down there as we were walking in. And now the sun's come out, we've got some blue sky and I'm hoping that it stays that way. Just found this uh, nice little spot. I think it's for a bit of uh, private fishing. But uh, yeah, it's really nice. And um, we're heading on up. You can see the moor there in the distance. We're heading up onto, uh, onto Ilkley Moor where we should find the uh, puddle stones. As you can see, I've just popped out onto Ilkley Moor now. So we're at the bottom part of the moor and we're heading on up this way, looking for the puddle stones. So it's a glorious day today. I don't know what that guy at the beginning of this vlog was talking about, spooky and eerie. This is absolutely gorgeous. So far so good, everything is going to plan. I'm following the map nicely. My little route that I made is, seems to be correct. Um, I was looking out for this uh, landmark and the stones just up on the horizon there are called the uh, Black Wet Stones on Ilkley Moor. I was looking for that landmark and when I get up there, I'll make my way along the top there. You can see them stones on the horizon. I believe they're called the Ilkley Moor Book Stones. So I'm going to stop there, hopefully, uh, find somewhere nice, just have a drink and something to eat. And then we'll make our way on a little bit further, quite a way further, and hopefully find the, uh, the puddle stones. And the puddle stones are the penultimate stones on the uh, Stanza Stones Trail. We've just got one set of stones left to find. And the last one is called the Beck Stones. And that is right over at the other side of uh, Ilkley Moor, dropping down towards Ilkley, uh, near the uh, cow and calf. Calf and cow? Cow and calf. The cow and calf stones is somewhere near there. So hopefully I'm going to get them all in and we might even get a trig point along the way. I do believe that we'll pass uh, Ilkley Moor trig point, which would be great if we get the trig point in it as well. So let's continue up and I'll see you when I get over there uh, for something to eat. Just a short 15 minute walk up here to the Bookstones and uh, there's some good uh, formations here and a fantastic view. Look at the view that I've got. Amazing view out over Ilkley Moor. 
I'll be heading on down this way. Apparently there's a, there's a cross, a stone cross, some kind of monument uh, down this way that I saw on the map. We're gonna see if I can find that. And then we'll make our way back up towards, I don't know whether you can see in the distance, there's a, a transmitter there, a wireless transmitter. We'll make our way back up towards that transmitter. That is a landmark that I have to pass past that and then uh, maybe half a mile further on we should find the um the puddle stones we will definitely find the trig point i know that's there but it's somewhere in between that transmitter and the trig point is the puddle stones so let's hope we find it i'm going to sit just down there and have something to eat and drink and then we'll be on our way down this path and the sunshine is still out it's a Amazing day, quite clear. There is a bit of mist in the distance still, but uh, pretty clear. Okay, we're back on with the walk again. You can see the bookstones behind me. Just had a little sandwich there. And the sandwiches were beautiful. My lass made them for me this morning. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, cheese and pickle. Cheese and Branston. Beautiful. And a uh, bit of a chocolate bar. You don't care about that. What we care about is, I'm looking for a stone monument, a cross called Kraupers. Kraupers Cross, I think it's called. I shall check that uh, before I get there, but I think it's called Kraupers Cross. And this cross dates back to the 12th century, so it's gonna be pretty old. So, uh, it's around here somewhere. Just thought it was worth just nipping down just to see it because I uh, haven't been on Il Clibur before. So I thought I would see all the little uh, landmarks. So I made it to the cross and uh, yeah, it dates back to the 12th century, apparently that cross. It says that it was uh, originally just like a waymark stone and then it was uh, Christianized, so hence the cross. So we are on our way up to the transmitter, which is up that way. Up, you can see it just on the horizon, the uh, wireless transmitter. And uh, when we get up there, we'll only have about maybe a mile, I'm not too sure because uh, it's somewhere in between that transmitter and the uh, and the trig point is the puddle stone. I don't think there'll be many puddles today because it's quite sunny and dry. So uh, we haven't got far to go to the puddle stones. And then from there, from the trig point, we will be traveling towards the uh, Beck stone. And that is the last stanza stone. These stones behind me and around here are called the thimble stones. And I can see that on the map and the puddle stones are over in this direction. They're somewhere between here and the trig point. Yes, the puddle stones have been found. That is the fifth stanza stone that we have visited. And the second one today, hoping to get the third one in. We've just got to go on there further on. The trig point is just on there. You might just be able to spot it, but then we've got quite a ways to go to find the Beck stone. The Beck stone is over the other side of, uh, of Il Climur, but I'm determined to do all three today. So the puddle stones here, and you might think them stones look really at home here on the Yorkshire Moors. And the reason they look at home is because they actually belong on the Yorkshire Moors. These are originally from the 19th century. They were in a mill in Bolton. But yeah, they're back on the Yorkshire Moors now and they look really at home. So we're moving on now to the Beckstone. Now, I don't think I've forgotten about the trig point. The trig point is coming up. I'll have a word with you at the trig point and then we'll get on 
over to the other side of Ilkley and hopefully find the Beck Stone. And then we've got all the way back to come. <laughs> Trig point at Ilkley Moor, so good to be on Ilkley Moor. And it's true what they say about Ilkley Moor, the wind is constant, even on a, a fine day, a lovely day like today. Now that we are up at the very top, the wind is constant. So I'm glad I've got my hat. <laughs> okay, we're heading on towards the Beckstone, which is on this way. I'm not too sure how far, I don't think it's too far. It's a case of uh, my map reading. And uh, then we've got the way back to come. So I'm enjoying the walk so far and hope you are too. A little bit out of breath and I've gone a little bit off course. Yeah, misjudged the map and I think I walked about a mile out of my way. The 12 stones behind me are the 12 Apostle Stones on Ilkley Moor. Now I'm gonna to have to head back on up this way and just try and get back on track towards the Beck Stone. So it's taken a little bit out of me. I was uh, all the way down there and I thought this is not the right way. So my map reading uh, is still <laughs> a little bit sketchy. Are you still with me? <laughs> Since we spoke last, I've covered about two miles and I've really put the foot down and it's starting to get interesting again now. And I know I'm going the right way because I'm starting to drop down towards Ilkley and I can't believe how, uh, how well today has turned out weather-wise. It's really clear. So I'm just making my way down and around onto this path down below. It's quite steep going. But once we get down there, I'm making my way to an area called Beckstone and that's where the Beckstone stanza stone should be. And it's somewhere near roundabouts, the same area as the cow and calf. We might visit that, but I'm really feeling the pace now. So hopefully get no blisters. My feet are still good. And I'm considering walking all the way back. Okay, I'm at the point where I need to start looking for the Beckstone. This is the Beck Valley on Ilkley Moor, just below Ilkley Moor, the landscape has changed. It looks like a scene from a Western. <laughs> if I put it in black and white, I might just do that. <laughs> yeah, looks a bit like a Western. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm looking for the stone right now. Don't want to walk past it. We're on our way towards the uh, cow and calf. Calf and cow, cow and calf. Uh, <laughs> the cow and calf uh, rocks, but it's somewhere around here. The Beckstone in Beck Valley. So let's hope I don't walk past it. So I have reached the cow and calf. You can see the cafe down there. I'm sure that's closed. And the cow and calf pub. What a shame. That'll be closed as well. I haven't found the stanza stone yet. It would be a damn shame if I don't find it. So it's in the Beck somewhere and the water apparently flows around it and over it. So uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult to find, I think. I think we might be in luck. I've been searching for this wooden bridge. You can see it down there. I'm a little bit exhausted. The legs are feeling it now and I've got a long way back to walk and I really want to walk it back. I don't want to use public transport or a taxi. So uh, I've got a long way to walk back, but it is a lovely day and finding the final stanza stone will definitely give me the boost to take me back. Yes, the Beck Stone, I have found it. The last stanza stone. And this stone was carved by hand, was freehand. He carved it in freehand. He did use a stencil, but the stone is so soft that he managed to do it freehand. So it's all different shapes. It's a really good one, a good one to finish off on. And uh, it did take quite some finding. So I'm really glad I found it. Still got some sunshine left of the day. I'm gonna head on back and uh, I'm going to finish this vlog off right here and uh, put the foot down on the way back and hopefully get back in good time. 
I'm almost out of water. Might have to drink some of this water out of this beck. Hope it's clean. So that is all the sands of stones done. We finish off here at Ilkley. And the reason I've had a look at all six stones individually, well, today we did the three. Amazing. I'm really glad we got the three in. We got the dew stone, we got the puddle stones, we got the trig point on Ilkley Moor, and we got the beck stone here. So we got three in today. But the reason I've had a look at them sort of broken up is so that I can do the full walk from Marsden here to Ilkley, which is a 50 mile walk. And uh, I'm trying to get the timing right so that we've got our full freedom and I can do a couple of nights wild camping along the way. So that's why I've had a look at them and thank you for uh, following me on these vlogs. If you've enjoyed this one, give me a like and consider subscribing. I upload a vlog every week. So if I don't see you through the week, I will see you in the next one. Bye.